A reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians, chapter 6. Brethren, and if a man be overtaken in any fault, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so you shall fo- fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something, or as he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so he shall have glory in himself only and not in another. For every one shall bear his own burden. And let him that is instructed in the word communicate to him that instructeth him in all good things. Be not deceived. God is is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in his flesh, of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the Spirit, of the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. And in doing good let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap not failing. Therefore, whilst we have time, let us work good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. See what a letter I have written to you with my own hand. For as many as desire to please in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer the persecution of the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they will have you to be circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified to me, and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And whoever shall follow this rule, peace on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man be troublesome to me, for I bear the marks of of the Lord Jesus in my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we come to the end of our study of St. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians on the YouTube channel. I have made a playlist, so it has uh, Galatians 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then this episode 6. And there's also two uh, prequel shows. They're all together in that playlist. So you can, if you're just now watching these, go back and and watch the previous ones. Okay. The title of this is, Does Paul Have the Stigmata? And it relates to verse 17 in chapter 6, where he says, For I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus in my body. And the Greek there for marks is the actual word stigmata. We'll get to that, but that's at the end of this chapter. I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. Let's look first at the beginning of chapter 6 and for the setup. Obviously, Paul is making a conclusion here, and he's signing out. He wants them to, now that he's laid down what is the gospel and what is not the gospel, he says, if there's anyone who's at fault here, chapter 6, verse 1, those of you that are spiritual— in a spirit of meekness, help those who have been overtaken in the fall. So we're not going to create more schism or division. Instead, we're going to help one another. And those of us who are spiritual, do it in meekness, not in pride. And that we should bear one another's burdens. Then he comes back. He wants to circle back here to circumcision. And that we can't glory in the flesh. Again, 
They want to glory in your flesh by circumcising you and seeing you try to work out your salvation through the law of Moses. That's not the gospel. That is not the gospel. And they say, it's curious here, that they can escape persecution by pretending to be Jews. You see, the Jews had some protection under Roman law. The Christians did not. They were a new thing and they were quickly persecuted, especially in the 60s in the year of our Lord. So Paul's saying, you know, it's kind of convenient if you want to pretend that you're a Jew then people won't notice you're a Christian. But if you're a Christian and you say, I don't live by the law of Moses, I don't keep the Saturday Sabbath, I don't keep kosher, and I don't seek circumcision, now you're kind of left um, hanging in persecution. Plus, also, those that are Judaizers are going to persecute you. Now, that is what leads us to this final uh, or p- uh, penultimate verse on Paul having the stigmata. Those are his words, the stigmata. Was it the same thing as St. Francis? I don't think so. Some people speculate, yes, maybe. But what he's saying here is that he has been persecuted by not proclaiming the law of Moses, but only faith in Christ. Now, what exactly is he talking about? Well, we get a clue to that in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul talks about how much he's been persecuted, particularly by his Jewish kinfolk, by the Jews who reject Christ. So he says in verse 23 there, they are the ministers of Christ. I speak as one less. I am more in many more labors, in prison more frequently, in stripes above measure, in deaths often. He says in verse 24, Of the Jews, five times did I receive 40 stripes, save one. Five times Paul, the apostle, was tied up and given a lashing of 39 stripes. The idea is if you gave someone 40, that was too much. It could kill them So, because 40 is a holy number. So you do one less than 40. So think about this. The Apostle Paul was tied up by Jewish persecutors and lashed five times. And each time he got 39 lashes. He also says in verse 25, Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I was in the depth of the sea. Okay, so Paul has been beaten badly. He's been lashed by the Jews five times, three times beaten with rods, sticks, and he's been one time stoned with rocks. And he's lived through all of this. And so what Paul is saying here in Galatians is, look, it would be easy for me when the Jews were going to whip me five times, with 39 lashes each. If I just said, hey, I'm, I'm a Jew. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching people to just obey Moses. They'd be, okay, we'll leave you alone. But he's saying, no, I suffer persecution because I'm preaching this unique gospel that Christ and Christ alone is the fulfillment of Moses. And therefore, those who convert to Christ only need to be baptized. They don't need to keep kosher. They don't need to keep Saturday Sabbath, and they certainly don't need to be circumcised. So I think when we get to verse 17, after he explains all this, he says, From henceforth, let no man be troublesome to me, for I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus in my body. I think that he's talking about his scars. He's been stoned, he's been beaten with rods, and he's been lashed. Now, if we look at the Greek of Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, I'll read it to you. Ego gar ta stigmata tu Jesu ento somati mu bastazo. All right, that translates as, for I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus in my body. If you look there in the Greek, you can see where it says stigmata, the sigma, the tau, the 
the yota, the gamma right there. And then right after that, you can see to Yesu, that's of Jesus. So you don't have to be a Greek scholar to understand uh, what's going on here in this little bitty section of Galatians. Of course, St. Paul wrote this epistle in Greek. So you're actually seeing how Paul wrote it. So here he uses the word stigmata. It's right there in the Greek, stigmata. That's, you actually pronounce it stigmata in the Greek. Now, we Catholics are familiar with St. Francis and Padre Pio in the stigmata they bore. By the way, Francis's stigmata was very different than that of Padre Pio. One of my oldest videos I did on this YouTube channel, it might be even 10 years old now, is the difference between the stigmata of St. Francis of Assisi and the stigmata of Padre Pio. Now, stigmata in Greek literally just means a mark. That's all it means. So if there's a, a stigma to something, you've probably said that in English, oh, that's, that bears a stigma. It bears a mark. It's been noted. So in Greek, stigmata doesn't necessarily mean that you're walking around and you have wounds in both your hands and in your feet and in your side like St. Francis. But Paul is saying that he has the marks, the stigmata of Jesus in his body. Now, a couple times he's talked about being crucified with Christ. Here he talks about uh, the world is crucified to him. So Paul very much sees himself as crucified with Jesus. Is he referring to the crucifixion marks um, mystically to himself? Or is he actually talking about uh, scars, marks on his body that if you met him, you'd be like, man, this guy's beat up. This guy's been stoned. This guy's been lashed. You know, maybe if you looked at his back, there might be lashing scars. Remember, he got 39 lashes five times from the Jews. What's the math on that? You can look it up. I, I dare not guess on live YouTube. That's 100, 195 lashes on his back. That'll do some damage. That'll do some damage. So Paul's saying, no matter what, if it's a mystical stigmata like Francis, which the reason I doubt that is because if that had happened, uh, it would be recorded uh, in the book of Acts. It'd be recorded by the early church. It'd be this phenomenal miracle. Uh, clearly, Paul's apostleship would be proven by this, and it would be mentioned, but there is no mention of that. So we do read about him being physically harmed. Um, in the book of Acts, and we also see it in, in, in the Corinthian correspondence. So that's why I think he's just talking about his scars, his marks, and, and whatnot. And that's why he says, I'm not going to let anyone bother me anymore. He's like, I, I've i taken the hits. I've gone through the school of hard knocks for apostles more than anybody. I've taken the hits, and I'm telling you, you Galatians, do not get circumcised. Do not obey the Mosaic law and do not keep Saturday Sabbath. Do not do it. Don't do it. He says, if you do, Christ availeth nothing for you and you have fallen from grace. That's what he says earlier in Galatians. And then the very end, he gives an apostolic blessing. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Sounds like what we say in the Catholic Mass. Right, The Lord be with you and with your spirit. There's one other thing that's kind of debatable here. It's in verse 16. He says, Whoever shall follow this rule, peace on him and mercy and upon the Israel of God. When he says upon the Israel of God, what is he talking about? If you're an evangelical dispensationalist who attends a megachurch, you believe that when he says, peace and mercy upon the Israel of God, he's talking about the Jewish ethnostate of Israel. You'll notice that televangelists and megachurch people believe that evangelical Protestants should be sending bukus of money, millions of dollars to Israel. That by honoring Jews who reject Christ, this is um, honoring God. It's a form of worship that we're supposed to lavish gifts upon the Jews, 
upon fleshly Israel. The Catholic Church does not believe that, obviously. When, it's, when Paul says, peace and mercy upon the Israel of God, he is referring to the church. The church. The church is the new Israel. So anytime you're reading the Psalms and it talks about Israel or the tribes of the Lord, as Catholics, we pray the Psalms, and when we hear Israel or tribes of the Lord, we think the church, the Catholic church. Anytime you're reading the Psalms and you hear the Holocaust, the sacrifices, the blood atonement, we think Eucharistic sacrifice, Eucharist. Anytime we're reading the Psalms and we see the king, the anointed, David, we think Jesus Christ. So we interpret the Old Testament in light of the new, and we see that the Catholic Church is the kingdom of God, and it's the fulfillment of the kingdom of Israel. Christ is not the king of two kingdoms, the kingdom of the church, the kingdom of God, which includes the Gentiles, and then there's also this other kingdom called Israel that li- that's since 1940-something been Uh, a state recognized in what we call the Holy Land? No. No. We believe as Catholics that the church is Israel. We are the new Israel. We are the bride of Christ. So, just wanted to clarify that as well. It's one of the places where if you don't read Paul like a dispensational Protestant, you realize that he identifies the church with Israel. Just like John, the apostle, in a vision, the apocalypse, identifies Jerusalem as the church. As a matter of fact, we just saw in Galatians. We just saw, was it uh, Galatians 4? I think it was Galatians 4. I've forgotten. Let me check so I don't mislead y'all. Where Paul says that there are two Jerusalems. There's two Jerusalems. Yeah, it's, it's four. Go, you can see my video on it. There are two Jerusalems. There's the Jerusalem that's free, that it corresponds to Sarah, and there's the Jerusalem in bondage that corresponds to Hagar. He says the Jerusalem that's free is the Christian. It's the Catholic Church. The Jerusalem that's in bondage is the synagogue. It is the Old Testament Jews who do not accept Christ. And so they're still slaves to the law and still slaves to sin. All right, well, there's Galatians. It's been a delight to go through it. I love Galatians. It's short. It's sweet. Um, It has uh, the opening chapter. We've got Paul talking about another gospel, how it's anathema. He even says, let him be anathema. He starts the tradition of anathematizing heretics. Chapter 2, we have the papacy, we have Peter, we have a little uh, friction, resistance between Paul and Peter over the treatment of Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. And then in 3, 4, and 5, we hear his argument against the law of Moses. He talks about how it was a tutor. And now that we've come of age in Christ, we no longer need a tutor and a babysitter. And we can cry out to God, Abba, Father. It talks about the two Jerusalems, as we just mentioned. And then in, in chapter 6, he does a nice summary. And he basically closes off and says, hey, I got the stigmatas. I got the wounds in me. Listen to me. Endure. Peace upon Israel. The church. The church. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. We'll close out here with the Our Father. Please pray with me. Oremos. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, Se libera nos amalo. Amen. Sancte Paule, or pro nobis. In nomine Patris, et Vidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. 
Please, if you enjoy these, if you benefit, the most important thing you can do is share these videos. There's a share button right below this video. Click the share and share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. I've seen a massive reduction in subscriptions and views ever since a major political event in our nation. And so the only way that this will get any views or people will watch it is if you actually manually share it because Twitter is, is no longer helping me out anymore. Major reduction, major throttling. I think what they're doing is instead of just canceling people now, they're basically just making people's channels invisible. Uh, if you like it, please press, press like and uh, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell and you'll be notified when I go live. Continue to pray that Holy Rosary and meditate on the mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the old law. That's why he's presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless, God speed, and St. Paul pray for us.